Yeah, hi. Alrighty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, by the time this uploads, it will be late on a date or early morning or whatever the fuck. I'm uploading, well, I'm recording a bunch of videos. I'm record, well, I've done recorded the, uh, the uh, collision video and all out. Now it's time for your raw review. Your Labor Day raw review, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank everybody for the birthday wishes since Labor Day, well, it's basically my birthday weekend. Now it's come and gone. I'm officially 24 now. Uh, I turned 24 on September 3rd. Day of All Out, and not that I wanted to watch us at the time. Um, so, as for Raw, I came home 30 minutes after the show started. I'm, and based on what I saw, the show was not really that great. It really wasn't. It really wasn't a great show. Besides, I guess the main event, I will, not, I will, don't mind, I don't, uh, which definitely surprised me, I guess, or just the, you know, didn't mind seeing it really at the main event, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this was kind of just your typical raw, you know, and it was kind of just boring for the most part. It's just kind of the same shit, basically, every fucking Raw. And it's just like, really? This is, this is what you're doing? And this is not what you want to do when now, that next week, Monday Night Football is coming back. And you're going to... I'm going to fucking... I, I know I'm already going to title the Raw review next week. Monday Night Football is no excuse. Why WWE Raw sucks, okay? Uh, you know damn well this show is gonna suck. It's gonna be the same shit. Uh, this show is not good. I will say this. The only good thing about this show now, and what I have to like, watch on YouTube for this, is at least you have Jay Uso on the show. And because of that, because you kind of... And I will say this. You have established like with Jay Uso, based on what you've been doing with him and Roman, you, you're making people care about the show because... Of what the character you made Jey Uso to be, his story, and there's a, actually a, now a story on Raw now that Jey Uso, he's not well liked by a lot of people because of him and the bloodline. Now he has a path where he had to make people basically trust him or whatever. So that's the little story that they have established a little bit, and now him being on Raw, and now they're talking about oh someone's gonna get drafted to SmackDown or whatever. Some people are saying Cody Rhodes. You do understand they not that Cody will be on Raw, so I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed saying Cody Rose will be drafted to SmackDown. Is that even going to be true? Well, that would make probably more sense for him to face, like, since if they're going to do Roman and him again. Even though, again, in my honest opinion, I don't want to see him dethroning Roman Reigns, but you know that's what they're going to fucking do. I don't know. Just know that if WWE doesn't do Cody Rhodes, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if he's the guy that doesn't get drafted to SmackDown. But again, this whole draft or this whole trade shit, it does not make any sense when literally the general manager is both general managers for both shows. And Pierre, what's the big difference? You still have fucking wrestlers going on both Raw and SmackDown, case in point The Miz and fucking LA Knight. What's the fucking difference? You had Cody Rhodes on fucking SmackDown two weeks ago. What's the fucking difference? And what's... Again, there's no need for a brand split. There's really no need for a fucking brand split. This is the only excuse where the brand split works because of a story like this. But they're literally ripping it off from last year with fucking Dominic and Rey Mysterio. But again, you could e easily just do something where fucking, you know, the idea that he's not... That either Jey Uso is not going to be on every show or whenever he... Like, I don't know. Something like that. Something. Or there has to be a certain contract where both people now are both... I don't know. Some bullshit. Like, seriously. Again, and also, again, this whole bullshit with Cody Rhodes. Oh, you know, Cody, you know, has to finish the story. He has to finish the story with Roman. This is the problem when, again, you have another world title. And you have to trade him to fucking Raw and SmackDown. This is the fucking problem when you have two titles. This is the problem when you have two world titles. It fucks up everything. It fucks up the idea that, you know, what... It's just like, again... Whatever. And again, it was competing for the chance to become world champion. So, uh, the World Heavyweight Championship. Back when they were crowning new champions. So, whatever. I mean, I don't give a fuck. Whatever. 
Grab your cold colas, drink my initially spy me some bitches go, oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit, cheers, motherfucker, cheers. Yeah, definitely happy Labor Day weekend. Wanna thank everybody for the birthday wishes. Always aspires to make the bitches go, oh shit, oh shit. All of y'all drink this in majesty in honor of me, alright people? But yeah. But we're all, I don't know, the show's pretty boring. They announced that Cuz me not on this show this week, but he'll be on next week. So they announced like, will he really even be like the the one that's traded? Like not that it matters. Like cause what's gonna make the difference? This branch is irrelevant. This fucking draft is relevant. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? I don't know, man. This draft shit sucks. Okay. Fuck it all. Okay. I don't know. I mean, Monday Night Football is next week. It's, it's just like, if you get shit rains, like, come on. It's not anybody's fault. The show started with the, the show started with the Jey Uso. Uh, Michael Cole in comedy says, yeah, Cody Rhodes used to be an EVP. I guess he can, he can do things, uh, he, he can get things done. Shut up. Okay, because they Mark mentioned AEW. Uh. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the big thing about this show was Jey Uso and also the main event. Because, get it? Because, oh, can Gunther prevail as the Intercontinental Champion? My problem, and you know, I mentioned this. The, my problem with Gunther's title ring, not that I'm saying it's not cool, and I don't like Gunther. I like Gunther. The only problem with his Intercontinental title ring is that. The only reason why I went this long, and it's really because they really weren't booking him much to defend his title. Especially, the my problem is he he wasn't even defending the title on on pay per views. Like that's my main problem with Gunter's title reign. In my honest opinion, the problem with like this title reign like, now he's going to be remembered as as now perhaps. Like, he has, like, five days now, unless they do something. I mean, that's what they gotta do. Like, and fuck this brand split. Why not have, like, Sheamus challenge for him on SmackDown or somebody, you know? That way you can see, will he actually fucking prevail as being the... You could have easily done shit like that. Like, again, but what I'm trying to say, like, just, can he, it would, like, maybe try to stop him from becoming the longest title reign, like, all that kind of shit? My problem with this is that the problem with this, right, is when it comes to, like, Gunter's title reign, is that he didn't even defend it on pay-per-views. He rarely defended it on pay-per-views. And all of a sudden, we should care, like, it just felt more like a TV title, if anything. And not just that, like, yeah, it's just, like, that's the thing. That's all, all it was. It's just him defending on TV instead of feeling like a chick. Like, this match that him and Chai Kim could have, could have actually happened in the pay-per-view. Would have made the pay-per-view better. But no, they didn't do that, sadly. They didn't do that at all. They could have done something like that, and also, I don't know, something lead to this show on Raw, or something with SmackDown, just, just all this path, like, will he prevail, and then he won't have to defend the title much after that. It's like, that's the thing that main, like, the problem with this entire, uh, reign is that he hasn't really defended the title much on pay-per-views. He's been defending the titles, just not on, on pay-per-views, which is what the title matches should be. Like, every pay-per-view should technically have a world, uh, have a fucking title match. should have all the titles on the line, really. And it's like, take away the purpose. Again, it's like basically saying, on a UFC show, we're gonna give you for where you have to pay money. We're gonna give you just a basic fight, and then the, the fucking TV you you'll get to see the fucking title fights there. Like, how does that make any sense? You're paying the fucking that's where this, the big title fight should be, especially since you've been building Chad Gable and Gunter their feud. So, and plus, like based on what happened tonight, which honestly it would've been perfect, to, oh, better to have it on a pay per view, my honest opinion. But whatever. We'll talk about that. We'll talk also like about Gunter. Like who should even beat Gunter now? I basically spoil what happened. But or who I, I what the old they should do. But anyways, show started with Jay Uso coming out. Makes his way through the crowd with the Uso champ pickup. He has his own theme, by the way. 
Jay says he appreciates that, and uh, but he always wanted to do this. It's like, oh, come on. Already by there, and I'm tired of these wrestlers doing this. Already that kind of ruined this for me. Because, I again, I like that Jey Uso's on Raw, and it gives people to care to watch because, you know, he kind of established himself. Sure, he has made a venture Jey Uso and blah, blah, blah. Sure, you know, because... He's been main events, and they showcase him as one of the big star, like stars lately, you know, on SmackDown, especially his feud with Roman. As long as they don't have him lose the jobbers, then sure, you know, he could definitely, he definitely came out of the Usos. He definitely showed like he is like one of the better ones right now, like the better of the Uso. Obviously, they're trying to work on maybe establishing both, right? But my God, why every wrestler does this? Like every wrestler, it's like you had to do this. Welcome to Monday Night Raw. Like, shut up. I'm sorry. It's like, really? You have. Why does every wrestler have to say, Welcome to Monday Night Raw? That's the commentary's job. You don't even. I don't even think you see fuck. Again, you don't see players. You don't see fucking sports players say, Welcome to NBA. Welcome to. And I, obviously, this is WWE. This is wrestling. I don't even think you see fucking AEW people say, Welcome to AEW Dynamite. Like, come on! You know I've never seen wrestlers back and say, Welcome to Monday Night Raw, unless you're a unless it's a big occasion. And it's not, like, always. Like, why is it always now all these stupid wrestlers say, Welcome to Monday Night Raw? Especially when it's like a fucking jobber or whatever. Like, seriously. Who gives a fuck? You're it's different if a guy was like, Welcome to Ma Raw. It is Jericho. If Jericho is because it's like his thing and whatever. Like, come on. Why does everybody have to say welcome to Monday Night Raw? Like, and it also they highlight that as a fucking promo. Like, shut up. And it also doesn't help. Like, all these pe people who do it have no charisma. Like, come on. They do all do it for the commercial. And by the way, their commercial sucks. By the way, whenever you see a Monday Night Raw commercial, it has been terrible. I hate these Monday Night Raw commercials. By the way. It just also sucks. Like, commercials used to be so fucking cool. Like, they used to fucking hype a show like... B B Monday Night Raw. Like, tune in to see John Cena versus Randy Orton. You know? Uh, or will John Cena get retribution for what Randy Orton did to his own father? Monday Night Raw. This Monday at 8, 7 Central on, the, on USA Network. Or 9, 8, 7 Central at the time. Like, what happened to shit like that with Monday Night Raw? With these commercials? Heck, with... On the next Friday Night SmackDown, the radar superstar is, uh, has had his long reign or something. But will uh, no, uh, the Undertaker is stalking Edge or whatever? Well, how will Edge retaliate with the you know, Phenom? Monday Night Raw, Friday Night SmackDown, 8 Central Central on CW, whatever. Something! God, what happened to these commercials, I swear? Anyways. Getting off track, but yeah, Jey Uso says he's been gone for two or three weeks now, but he missed, uh, but he missed them. It felt longer than that. He said, uh, since ba based on the fans reacting the way they did, Jay says he it really hit his, his breaking point after fighting his family every week on national TV, uh, like Family Feud, but for real. Out of blue, the, un the unexpected uh, called him in Cody Rhodes. He might have created some enemies in the back. Because of his past, but he knows where to find him. Main event, Jey Uso is now in your city, he says. Sami Zayn came out, and I wish before this, and this is how I would kind of build this better. I wish Sami Zayn confronted Jimmy Uso before this. Maybe try to get him, based on, like, okay, what happened with Jimmy? I would have liked that what they should have done is basically, they should have had Jim, Jimmy Uso come on a SmackDown, and then Sami Zayn, since he was a, you know, unified tag champ, right? He was the undisputed tag champ, so apparently, you know, he doesn't have that privilege anymore since, whatever. What they should have done, they should have had, as for essentially, that Sami Zayn, as he was the tag champ, because he, he could have been on, Sm on SmackDown, he should have fucking showed up Confront Jimmy. He's like, "What the fuck you did? What you did?" And you should I basically try to convince him. This is not how you do. You know, I knew you. Whatever. That's what should have happened. They missed their opportunity with that. Not that, especially like, cause like, wasn't Jimmy more so more in favor of Jay? 
trying to get Jay to like Sammy, and he liked Sammy already. You could have easily done shit like that, but they sadly never took the opportunity to do that. So it kind of fucked up, like, you know, the, the you know, basically that plan that could have worked to help this even more. Like, you, he could have mentioned that, you know, yeah, I tried to get to Jimmy, but I'm happy he came to your senses type of shit. That's what have been nice. Sadly, they dropped the ball with that. So what, if Sammy and Jimmy were to meet each other, it is they all of a sudden already hate each other still, even though fucking Sammy is like the advocate of fucking having the bloodline fall, and he uh, always liked the Usos. He also even liked Solo. I, I don't fucking know. Whatever, man. What they're ever they're doing is like, whatever. It could have been way better. Obviously, they kind of don't have any idea. Obviously, why the fuck did Jimmy, um, Jay just quit, right? And he just comes back out of nowhere. I don't know, I think this was too sl uh, slow, uh, or too quick, also, you know, like, whatever. Or just why you call it, I don't know. I don't fuck it. Whatever, at least with, I will say this, with Jay Uso being on Raw, you have this stab, it's like, you know what, if he's on Raw, people are gonna give, give a fuck. Especially there's a story now with him, so. Same as he comes out, and Usi Chance uh, picks up, Sammy says, it... It is true that many people will have a problem with Jay being right here, right now. Sammy and Kevin Owens haven't uh, seen eye to eye. I mean, he said him and Kevin haven't seen eye to eye with, uh, with, with, with him with about uh, Jay. But Sammy confirms that Owens isn't here tonight, but tonight is not is about him and Jay. Sammy wanted to make sure that he... So what, are they going to try to do some dissension shit with Owens and Zayn now after all the fucking shit they did to try to get them together? Didn't they also establish that Owens understands that Sammy knows what he's doing, like, and kind of knows okay with it? I thought that was a thing. Like, whatever. I don't fucking know. Sammy wanted to make sure that he was the first person to, uh, that saw that Jay saw in Raw and he could look at him in the eye and tell him straight to the face that he's happy Jay is here. Sammy knows they have history and isn't expecting to be buddies overnight, but Sammy has been really proud of him extending his hand and Jay doesn't ex uh, shake it. Sammy says whenever Jay's ready to talk, he's here, and he goes to leave, but then Jay, Jay says, that wasn't very oozy of me, wasn't it? And then, uh, and then like, Jay comes in, uh, or Jay extends the hand, but then Sammy just goes to hug him, and they basically, like, you know, hug each other, and embrace, and it makes people happy, so there was a little oozy moment. I do like this, because it, it's helping the story... It helped advance the story of, of the acceptance. And again, I would have liked it better. If, I would have liked it right after Jay's, uh, Jimmy's heel turn, given how that, that was WWE's fucking fault. I think, what, again, like thinking back at it, that week where Jimmy was not on the show, I mean, how, how they're supposed to know that Bray Wyatt was going to pass away the week after? But, like, he could have still tried to do something, I don't know, on the show. With, again, with Jimmy... They should have definitely done right after the Jimmy tur heel turn or whatever. They should have had Sammy try to confront uh, J Jimmy. Or heck, why not mention on a Raw, I don't know, something. Like something. You could have mentioned it like, you know, uh, Jimmy, what the hell you do? Or something to lead to him, me on SmackDown to try to confront Jimmy. Like, I don't know. But overall, this is good. I do like this. You know, it just, that, it's that, that little bit... Of that seasoning, you know, it's that it's missing that little seasoning that could have made it more perfect. You know, that little seasoning. You know, how you have a little nice meal. It's like it just needs a little something. It's that that little something that's missing. That him confronting Jimmy. Because again, did they not forget the, the Bloodline Civil War? Again, that's my problem, man. This Bloodline Civil War. They dropped the ball from that. You know, just for like a what? It's just like. Honestly, again, in my opinion, thinking about it, because obviously, who, okay, oh, how would they have Jay lose against Roman at SummerSlam? You could have thrown a bunch of ways, something. But in, honest, in all honesty, would it have been a problem if Jay was to beat Roman, in all honesty? Would it have been a good moment? Am I saying Jay, uh, is it a problem if Jay was to have a short title run? Again, I, I say this a bunch of times. I would not have mind. Like, I, yes, I do think Jake would have been great to win because it would have been not only a good moment, but, like, what is a better way to end that fucking match? Like, honestly, why not? 
You could have had Jay. Honestly, even thinking about it now, Jay's on TV. Like, why not? I don't know. Roman's not on TV. You could have easily lead to like Roman just like taking this break and coming back, getting the title back just in time for Mania. I don't know, shit like that. Something. But what they could easily have done is that Jay could have won the title. Roman, uh, I don't give a fuck. Roman d doesn't need a break unless, like, I don't know, something. Something they have to do. They should have fucking have Roman, honestly, up until maybe Mania. Then he could take his long break. I don't fucking know. Roman basically wins the title back at Payback. Because given, like, you know, the history about Payback, he could have fucking win the title back at Payback in some way. Maybe if they did, like, a triple threat with him and Jimmy. That could have built that dissension between Jimmy and Jay. And then, you know, they could, he could be feuding with his own cousins. And then lead, leads to that dissension with fucking Jimmy J. That way, eventually, in one match of a pay-per-view. Could have been an October, November pay-per-view. Something. They turned, they fucking, that could have led to the turn of not helping fucking J win or whatever. That could have helped me. And again, it just needs build, better build-up. That's all it needs. That better build-up would have helped. You know? Uh, I don't know. It's whatever. What's done is done. You can't you can't change the past. Whatever. But it's just how. It would, but again, based on everything you have done, you could have easily had had Sammy try to get involved to like wonder why Jimmy did what he did, and that could have it, that little seasoning would have helped. Just you know what I mean, folks. Well, overall, this is still a fine segment. This is still a good way to start the show. And I. I I guess this is like the only one of the only good things of that open the show. So I did like, well, I did like it was still a, unfortunately a boring show. But what I liked about the show tonight is that they basically couldn't carry the entire night about Jay. They did showcase Jay throughout the show a little bit. I did like that a little bit, and then you know a nice little main event, you know, because there was a, an, an intrigue of stake involved and all that kind of stuff. So it was like, yeah. So it wasn't like the worst Raw, but it was pretty fucking boring. That's for damn sure. Uh, so after that, but then like when Jay was like going uh, going to the back in the entranceway, you had like Matt Riddle and McIntyre angry at, at, at Jay Uso, basically showcasing that, you know, yeah, he's not well liked. So, and then like Sammy has to like calm them down or whatever. So that's what happened. Basically, and yeah, so like they're, they're establishing, they're establishing that he's not well liked, which is fine, which is fine, it's fine. Backstage, we see uh, Seth Rollins. Oh, not Seth Rollins. But okay, well, yeah, uh, Ricochet is with Adam Pierce. Ricochet says he wants a new opportunity. Pierce says he's working on it. Okay, like this is based on the Logan Paul shit. Shouldn't Ricochet want a rematch? Not say I want to see a rematch, because I, I don't want to see like Ricochet beat him. But the guy lost to Logan Paul. Logan Paul cheated, right? Shouldn't the guy by logic want a rematch? You're giving your rematch to Raquel next week. Not that I, I remember like or cared, but and you think that's really gonna beat Monday Night Football? By I don't know what to tell you, but. Like, Seth Rollins is shown. He's walking up. Pierce tells Rollins that you're not clear to be here tonight. Like, I okay, I'm not sure because again, I missed like the most of the first hour. Did did they mention what happened last night on Payback after the show ended? I'm not sure. If someone let me know. I'm guessing that's what it is. I don't even think they mentioned it. Nor do I care really because like, great, they're they're really continuing this feud. They're continuing this feud again. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, Nakamura's not a main eventer. We, we know he's not winning a championship. Why even continue it? Why are you really doing another match? Do you not have any other ideas? And the sad thing is, are they really building towards Ricochet versus Rollins in the future? Are they really doing that? What is with WWE? Are, do you guys not understand? You have a chance for Rollins to be a main eventer as the champion, right? And you're having him face jobbers who are not... Deserving to be main eventers. You can't just turn these people to main eventers. You understand. 
that Seth Rollins versus Ricochet is not a main event feud. Nakamura versus Rollins is not a main event feud. And again, I thought the match was boring last night. Or fucking payback, whatever it was. And you're really continuing that feud. And now you're going to give us another boring feud that makes, like, no, 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 not even that sense. It's like, not even intriguing for a world title feud. Why? What are you doing? Why is Rollins facing the most gayest wrestlers? Isn't it the gay title or something? Isn't it the world gayest championship? He's facing Finn Balor who appeals to the gays. He's facing fucking Nakamura who kisses fucking the Great Muta. And I'm not, I will get in the move. Great Muta will be like, you know, I think he's a little harder. I don't talk you. <laughs> fucking love, I like that. The great Muta just says, says he's fucking gay. Like, I think I think a fucking like, gay. Like, oh, I love you. <laughs> I fucking like that moment. God damn. I don't know. I just see that like a Facebook or whatever. But and then fucking now now you're trying to do Ricochet versus Rollins. Like, what are you doing? What are you fucking doing? You could have Rollins like face fucking. See, this is why you don't need two world titles, man. I don't give a fuck Roman is gone, man. This is just not intriguing. And this is the world title feud. This is why guys like Edge the one instead the fucking match. Like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? What are you fucking doing? Like, I swear. Oh, man. I actually have a video, uh, I forgot, I just remembered. Uh, I actually have a video about Edge basically exposing the dirt sheets. Um, when people said he was leaving a WWE for AEW or whatever. He hasn't even made a decision yet. Um, I actually have that video. It just, I, I didn't upload because of the passing of Bray Wyatt on that day. So, you know, basically it was a busy day that, you know, it was basically a busy week that time. I'll try to upload it now, honestly, so... But it's like Edge should have fucking won the title. Rey Mysterio. Obviously, that's the problem. There's no intriguing baby faces and heels. We're getting we're getting to that point that there's nobody intrig there's really no one intriguing on Monday Night Raw. That's the problem. No one at Monday Night Raw is intriguing for a world title feud. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Rollins as a fuck is like ugh. You have him do that, but apparently he's supposed to be serious. Right now, you mentioned his family. You're like, oh yeah, whatever, man. Whatever. I don't know. Something about I'm not come over apparently recorded a video package. Like, ah, you know, I have you in the back or something. Some package. It's trying to be like an anime villain. It's like it's kind of gay, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I mean, palm my hand. I don't know, something. I that's what I've heard. Ricochet, Ricochet says, you know, I respect you, Rollins, you know. I respect that you coming in the ring and shit, you know, man. You know, let me fucking, can I finger you, please? That's what Ricochet is. Like, Ricochet, again, he's trying to finger pop fucking Rollins' asshole. Like, he ring pop his own asshole. He wants that sexual gratification. It's deep. The Viking Raiders in the first match defeated McIntyre and Riddle. Uh, this was a Texas, uh, not Texas, it was a Tornado Tag Match. They basically did what, what, you know, basically it was a repeat of the, the fucking fake hardcore match that happened a few weeks ago on SmackDown. When they did, you know, that bike, the fucking Brawling Brutes match, that Brawling Brutes and Tree Profits match, where they, they call it a hardcore match, but it was even hardcore. So they basically did basically the same match because get it, this is not hardcore, but I'll include a table here this time. And that, you know, it's because it, it could happen in our turn. I don't fucking know. All I know, Kofi accidentally hit Riddle and that costed Riddle and McIntyre the match. It's like, whatever. Whatever. Rollins comes out and he offers Nakamura a world time rematch tonight for some uh, uh, like, why? We just had this fucking match, and the baby face is on. Again, I, I was confused, but then, like, oh, because uh, unless they mention what happened, don't show after, which, again, why didn't they show that on the pay per view? Like, uh, Rollins getting attacked? But, like, seriously, if this, again, if this is 
I don't know what's going on. Rollins fucking offers a, a rematch. Like, why? Why? If they didn't mention that, then why? Should you be moving on? Like, you already beat the motherfucker. Now you're chopping a rematch again. And Nakamura says no for some dumb fucking reason. Oh, he's playing mind games, apparently. Like, what mind games? You don't know mind games. Your, your mind is over fucking Great Muta's fucking lips. You want that fucking Asian on your... You want that Asian mitts on your penis. That's what you want. Like, instead of... Along with that... Like, you want that Asian cum. Like, ugh. For some reason, not Ricochet attacks Nakamura's. Like, whatever. Who gives a fuck? This is a fucking garbage match. And no one fucking cares. A smart debate match. With fucking Nakamura defeating... Wait, Ricochet. Ricochet beats Nakamura! By disqualification. As Nakamura attacks Ricochet with a chair. Like, I don't give a fuck. Rollins runs out of the ring and brawls, but then once again, Nakamura uh, baits and beats him up. They show Demon Priest teasing and cash, but then Rhea Ripley says, not tonight. Why not? Like, what? Why not? God forbid, give something to people care? I don't fucking know. Unless, like, Rhea Ripley thinks he's not weak enough, like, then okay, but whatever. Whatever, man. Zoe Starks mentions what happened uh, happened at Payback, how she respects Trish, but Trip. Trish proved that, and you know how she's the best, but no one pushes Joey Stark, and Shayna Baszler walks up and wondering, like, let's, it's good that you got rid of the dead weight, but, you know, let's see if you're really the baddest bitch, so they wanted, it'll be, it's basically the battle of the She-Hawks, and who fucking cares, who cares about that, the Judgment Day comes out, they said the bloodline has fallen, and the Judgment Day has written as the most dominant faction in, co in the company, they mentioned it because people are talking about, J about, J, J, J Uso. They talk about how they run, they're, they're running with gold, but people are talking about J Uso because get it on, you know, J Uso's on Raw now, and blah, blah, blah. but you know, who cares because the, we're, we, we overrun the bloodline, blah, blah, blah. We're better than the bloodline. Again, they ripped off blood, the blood, whatever. They're, yeah, they mentioned they're dripping with gold. Finn Balor thanks Rhea Ripley for the, being the voice of reason for him and Priest, and how they celebrate. This is one year since Dominic joined the group. Uh, he also thanks M JD M Doofy Head McGee for having their back for 20 years, whatever. And how Finn Balor's Grand Slam flip, Finn or whatever. And they have an ultimate. She get and she gave an ultimatum for them to whatever. I don't fucking know. They mentioned Jay Uso, like I basically said. Then JD McDonough comes out. He says, hey, yeah, I was getting to like you, but then, you you know, whatever, then you're annoying, whatever. McDoofy Head basically says, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I, I have to mention there's one problem, you know. Uh, I see you guys have a problem, but, you know, you also have a problem with the briefcase. And then they like, you only won gold. You know, you should go to the briefcase because I have a different one for you. They basically rehashed the bloodline thing where Roman gave Sammy the shirt. They kind of, again, they're rehashing old bloodline shit because they had nothing better to do. Not that I'm saying it's a bad idea what they did. It's just, you're kind of basically ripping it off. Whatever, he gives, uh, gives fucking David Priest a senior money in the bank. Get it? And whatever, and just Judgment Day colors or whatever. Sammy Dane Rupp says, gentleman and Dom. Mentioning how Rhea Ripley is a man. And Domus is apparently a woman, whatever. He says, you know, Owens is not, you know, Owens is not here, but it took five of you to take the championships. You know, uh, it was a very big beating is reserved for the biggest turds. Yeah, and Dom. But then the Doofy had the keys. He goes, why not? Why, why, why are you mentioning him? Why not me? You know, like, uh, what, oh, I know you're about one man. Like, shut up. Uh, whatever. Move, do, me. Doofy wants to ask, want to ask fucking tonight. Whatever. Fuck it. That's all you need to know. Chelsea Green uh, goes interrupt Santa Pierce mentioning how Piper Nevin is injured. Or I don't fucking know, nor do I care. Why is he a champion? Boy, aren't these titles cursed? Like, who gives a fuck? Uh, apparently, that was also mentioned that, oh, are the titles cursed? That's what fucking was mentioned. Whatever. They were killed, like, interrupts for some reason. At least a fucking match that no one really gives a fuck about, whatever. Zoe Starks loses to Shayna Baszler, and then, oh, you have, you had a better fight than Ron. I don't give a fuck about this. Judgment Day backstays. Balor proposes a Judgment Day about adding McDoofy head to the faction. Free says McDoofy needs to 
prove himself, and Dom says if Priest and Balor wants him, he is cool with it. And Rhea Ripley says that they will need to see how McDoofy Head does against Zayn. Priest and Balor leave, but Ripley tells Dom to make sure everything is right regarding McDoofy Head's match. Raquel defeats Chelsea Green, and she wants a rematch, but, but Dom not involved, whatever. Drew McIntyre says if Jay Uso messes up, that he was going to deal with the person who brought him to Raw, Cody Rose, basically planting the seeds of fucking McIntyre. McIntyre's being angry. They, they basically, it, this is what happened. Like, he was talking to Kofi, whatever. He's like frustrated and he's thinking about Jey Uso or whatever. I don't fucking know. He's not happy about Kofi costing the match, but he's slowly fucking angry, whatever. The Miz, Miz TV, ladies and gentlemen, get your fucking popcorn and sodas, people. The Miz is on TV and who gives a shit? Imagine how... Actually, I, I'll be right back. Let me go get a charger. My fucking uh, phone... My laptop's about to run a battery. I'm back. Oi, gotta hurry up. Oi. Gotta hurry up before it closes. Alright, I saved the day. Alright. Miss says his guest tonight will shed light on what happened to Payback. And he calls it, he says, Oh, yeah, they're calling Cena the greatest of all time. Like now. That's like his catchphrase now. Whatever. They call him the greatest of all time, Jazz Cena. So basically, his music hits. You know, oh wow, God for, uh, it was, you know, oh, Cena's actually on the show. They didn't say he was going to be on the show, but he's actually going to be on the show, right? No. Of course he's not on the show. Basically making everybody fucking, uh, but this is good heat, guys. This is good heat. You see, there's a difference between good heat than a fuck you heat. This is a fuck you heat. Okay? This is basically WWE saying fuck you. You're not good enough to get Cena. You're not good enough to fucking... You, you're in, we don't give a fuck to make this show better. That's what... Okay. That's what people don't think. I'm not saying this is a bad heat. Or is like this is a, a bad way to... But you have to understand. You are... You are getting the lowest ratings in of all time now. Where you desperately need surprises to make people care. You're desperate. Like, that's the thing. We can't be surprised anymore. Or we can't fucking look forward to anything anymore. That's why fucking WF has announced things. Because you have lost faith with the fans. If you don't announce it, that's the thing. You don't announce it, how are we going to believe it's real? Or to care? That's the fucking problem. They lost their faith because of shit like this. And yet you're doing more of this. You're doing more of the fake, oh, get it? This guy is here on, on the show. And you're ba this is again, fuck you heat. Because you're making the fans lose their faith. You For crying out loud, you are getting the lowest ratings nowadays in wrestling. And you basically, you know, God forbid, a guy who draws, like you're not, John Cena is a draw. For, you know, modern wrestling or whatever. Is he a big a draw stone cold? No. But, God forbid. You know, he's obviously recognizable. God forbid a guy like Cena. To be on the show. To make the show better. Like it or not, he does make the show fucking better now. Compared to everybody, he's fucking better than everybody. God forbid you don't have him on the show. And... I mean, you, you fucking fake a shit, and then you're gonna make people be more turned off. You're turning off these. You're make. You're saying a, it's basically fuck you heat. It's fuck you heat. It's fuck you to the fans. You're not good. You're not good enough to get this. You're making people less entertained. So you're on purpose. You're refusing to give people good shit. That's again. It's no different when Kevin Owens did what he did, which sure is fine. But like, like you're not. It's like saying fuck you. You're not. You're not get good enough to get this on the raw. You're gonna have to pay for WrestleMania to watch Stone Cold come and beat Kevin Owens' ass. 
You're saying fuck you to the, these people. It's not fucking good heat. It's saying fuck you. Oh, but the kids are crying or whatever. That's heel heat. But you have to understand that, sure, that may be, but like, come on. Who cares about the Miz and whatever? What heat does he need? You already fucking done that all, and it's like, he needs that big heat? Like, whatever. It's not even good heat, people. It's like, we, we knew he was not going to be there. They basically did a get it? Oh, John Cena is invisible. They did the invisible John Cena meme. They were basically there. See? John Cena's here, but he's invisible. Because getting you to see me. I never let. I never have a name. Never got. To, I'm not going to come back to, unless you announce me, Sination. They don't, don't announce me, Sination. That's why I'm ain't here, Jack. God forbid, one of the only last like, big stars you ever had. You ever fucking showcase as the face of the company, and you don't basically fucking showcase them. You don't, you're, you're gonna fucking just basically it's a fuck you thing, unless this is gonna lead to a feud with him and with him and the Miz. But you know damn well that's probably not gonna happen. You know damn well that's gonna happen. But again, even if they did, really, another Cena and Miz feud? Are you kidding me? And the sad thing is, the sad thing is, that's more intriguing than any other stupid match that you could probably put on on Fastlane. Whatever, man. Whatever. Big ovation, but there's no Cena. They act like, you know, Cena's there, but get it, it's a you can't see me meme, whatever. He says this feels weird because, you know, can they see Cena? You can't see him. Miss says Cena's sitting right there because get it all. You know, we're poking fun that, you know, you guys can see him. Miz asks, did Ellie and I pay, pay Cena? The crowd says, yeah. And then did they offer him during these hard times? Yeah. Did Cena proposedly screw him over? Do you conspire with Ellie Knight? Yeah, he says. Uh, and a Miss shouts, uh, she wants them to shout yes. Miss then realized he doesn't like yes too. And they should just nod their heads. Miss tells invisible Cena to leave the ring, but Cena doesn't live it. Listen, a tiny ball chance picks up. Miss shoves Cena before, uh, well, invisible Cena shoves, uh, sub Cena before getting shoved back. A holy cha- So, okay. You know, you know how that those stupid indie wrestling shit happens? Like, you see Kenny Omega wrestling a blow-up doll and a wrestler wrestling a tent? We're seeing those fans react to shit like this on here. This is the first time WWE did something like that. You do understand that normal casual people will think this is fucking retarded, right? And obviously a no normal people won't get the you can't see me meme. You see, this is just an in-joke, but how would people get... Even, but again, an invisible man. You do understand this is why re like people think this is not funny. And it, again, this is not funny because, again, it's just not funny. The miss is not really entertaining. And two, come on, this is indie dumb shit. They're doing indie shit on WWE. Great. It has come, see, whoever, great, fucking dumb indie shit has made it to WWE as well now. Great. Yeah. Whatever, fucking, they pretended that Cena, that Cena was going to attack the Miz, but then Miz overcame basically doing when it does a skull crush it for now, whatever. Miz says, Knight's future success is about to be risen as the invisible John Cena in the ring. Whatever. The fact that fans chanted, holy shit, like, you guys are fuck. Again, these are weird smarky fans. Like, fuck y'all. Priest reveals that someone's getting traded to SmackDown for Jey Uso. Whatever. Tommaso Ciampa and Pierce are going to have a conversation about something or whatever. They seem like having conversations, like whatever. Who gives a fuck? Oh, is it DIY? What is what these smart? What's with these smarts? That are like they're so like 
Where's the I want? Where's my beautiful uh, Johnny Gargano? I want to go gay on his gargantuous fucking. Uh, I mean, his nice small penis. Uh, it's gonna be so orgasmic. I swear, I fucking hate these smarts. Like they fucking think like they they miss Johnny Gargano. Like whatever. JD McDoobie and McGee wins against Sami Zayn in a row with a sense of dirty gay, what, dirty dumb? Like, what, why, why are people calling him dirty dumb? Obviously, that's so stupid. He's not dirty. Oh, but he, you know, I'll oh, get it. He's a ex con. Like, whatever, man, whatever. Sami beats up Dom, but McDoofy Head steps up uh, from Dom's aid and get, then drops McDoofy Head with a Hellenic heck. So much for winning, you know? Yeah, the receipts you show like uh, Jay Uso throughout the show. Uh, judgment, we see Judgment Day congratulates JD McDoofy Head for his victory. Dirty Dom walks off and stops in front of Jay Uso. Dom says, "Both came from a messed up, you know, like he's like, yo, yo, man, yo, yo, we probably, you both S con man, you know, we both from fucked up families and the Hall of Fame fathers. But I know what Jay's going, I know what you're going through." Everybody respect your father, but no one knows who, uh, what, what home in life is like. You know, you have no family. No one likes you, but no one likes Dom. Uh, I, you know, if 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 you want, we'll talk to the Judgment Day. There's always open arms there. You know, I'll tell you, and I thank you for taking the time to hear. Basically, he's trying to also like get Jimmy Jay Uso in the Judgment Day, which. It's intriguing a little bit, I guess, you know, but it's like, whatever. Since the next week, the Co Cody Rose returns on Raw, like, do they not know what return means anymore? Return means, like, you fucking coming back from a long fucking, a long fucking, basically, vacation, or a long fucking hiatus. Like, nine months. Six months, something at least. Fucking, when you haven't been on a period of time. He's been gone for two weeks, people. And now he's... Same thing with Roman. Everything's a Roman Reigns return. You can't just say Roman Reigns appears. Cody Rose appears. Like, you, God forbid. You ever know, heard the word appear means? And you really think this is going to draw on the ratings for Monday Night Football? Yeah, Cody Rhodes and fucking Raquel versus Rhea Ripley for the... Uh, that better not be the main event, goddamn. The main event. Gunter defeated Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship. He's still the Intercontinental Champion. Gunter is apparently breaking the Haunty Tonk Man's record this Saturday, I believe. I mean, easily he could have done something where Gunter was to basically maybe like, you know, no one to defeat me or whatever. You could have done something like this where I mean, the end of the show kind of a little cold. Well, it's not cold, but... Because, like, God forbid, a heel main events the show and wins, right? Um... But, yeah, um... Gunter wins. You know? Good match, by the way. Very good match. It's not believable Chad Gable winning, but it definitely... Chad Gable impressed me. You know, that he's, like... In a way... And I think I'm growing to like, you know what? If Chad Gable was to be, you it just definitely this should help Chad Gable be elevated more. That he could be a very, even though despite his size, he could be one of the most tough motherfuckers. And I would like that. Like I would like that. Keep building him as a top fucking small, big wrestler who could do these big moves to wrestlers, which I like. I the guy can wrestle. God bless him being Olympic. Type of, and he's establishing a personality more. I want to see him, this guy, more you know successful. So I like Chad Gable. I'm happy to see, and he's fucking had a great match. That match was really good. I will not lie. Definitely would have been way better to be on a pay per view though, because more deserving to be on a pay per view. It's good. Definitely fucking my god, seeing his Chris cry, my heart, man. Like I saw the Chris kids cry right out. That's good. It's good heat. That's heat. That is heat. Want to talk about heat? That's heat. Making the kids cry. Their father seeing their father lose. And I'm I'm surprised Chad Gable has those kids. He has. And I feel bad for the kids, but you know it's good heat. You know. 
they kind of end like you know just gun control, which is fine. It's just fine in the gun control, but like I would like to see you know just a bit like you know why not like somebody come confront Gunter you know after the match you know something or you know maybe like you know he like oh, I know it could defeat me. I would like the Sheamus attacks him something to lead to maybe fuck it. Why not like that one extra night? Cause you have still. Fr Why not make Friday night watchable? Have Gunter defend his tie against Sheamus or anybody something. You fuck the brain split or whatever. S something to make people care about, you know. Definitely, who I want to see Gunter lose the title to. Definitely be too soon if he just loses it. Right? I don't know why WWE just does this. After they break a record, they already they all like they legit always fucking drop the title after happy with Nikki Bella. Breaking AJ Lee's record. Same thing with the New Day breaking the tag team title record. You don't need to have always when you break a record. Immediately they lose the titles. Drop it when it makes sense. I would like to see maybe like uh, around a Survivor Series. And I think the one person who should do it. Maybe LA Knight. Make that the modern Ken Shamrock Rock feud. And why not based on his popularity. Have that be the title LA Knight wins. And it will help him with his skyrocket. To help him lead to be more. You know. More of a star. Have him be known as the guy to throw on Gunter. Why not? Why not? Anytime we're at WrestleMania, I don't know, something. Something big. I, Survivor Series will be good, honestly. Have him win at Survivor Series. Overall, good main event.